First of all, I think this was a great session. Uh, let me just summarize what I heard and throw it open to discussion. I'll put it in, in simple-minded terms. First of all, there's just a ton of data out there. Uh, so much data that it's impossible for the mere mortal cardiologist to individually analyze the data. So we become dependent on um, the wisdom of, uh, of, of, our, of our learned colleagues. One thing we did learn, though, over the years is garbage in, garbage out with respect to data. And it's interesting to see how people can use and manipulate data to create a message um, um, for their, uh, that they either believe in or that they they may want to promote for various reasons. The second thing we've seen is that media is driving medical practice in ways that we've never seen before. That's very, very, very important because it's created the ability for certain physicians to become stars. Now, that's not necessarily bad, although it seems like a pain, because it has stimulated these types of discussions. And the more data that is created, the more likely we're actually going to find the truth, if there is a truth. The next thing is that DES does seem to have very one very important limitation, which is late stent thrombosis. It's undeniable. It's rare, but it's serious. And what we really don't know is what the long-term tale of that is. And more importantly, we, need, we have no insight into the mechanism of, long, of uh, DS. People have their theories. It's the polymer. It's this. It's that. The truth is no medical therapeutic that is this broadly used has been as little studied mechanistically as drug-eluting stents at the basic science level. And in the end of the day, what we really need to resolve this debate and to retire the surgeons um, is we need better devices. We need devices that don't have a propensity for perpetual or near perpetual thrombosis and that um, we can stop dual antiplatelets. So with that, I'd like to uh, throw, throw it open. Um, and um, I, I can start. Perfectly. Okay, good. I wanted to create a little anger here. Why do you want to retire the surgeons? What have they done to you? <laughs> Actually, I don't. Some of my best friends are surgeons. I just said that to piss you off. <laughs> well, you know, actually, you, you don't want to retire the surgeons. I mean, we work with them very closely, and they're critically important. But, but we don't also want inappropriate use of surgery either. Uh, and I, I think that, um, David, all I can say about your slides is some of them were very attractive. And it's a good thing that Sarah Palin wasn't here to watch your talk, because I think she knows how to hunt. Um, you know, I, you know I, I think you... Uh, and I, we, we shouldn't have too much of a cabbage multivessel discussion because that's going to be a next session. But um, I think you did fall into the trap of several of the things that we often see surgeons and non-surgeons do. And that is that you, you're talking about mortality with DES and BMS and, and using relatively small studies. And it takes at least 40 or 50,000 patients to see differences in mortality of 1% or lower. And that's why the, the meta-analyses you showed, Stetler being the largest at 18,000, wasn't large enough. That's why we did this larger one, which is now 190,000 patients, where you do see a difference in mortality. But more concerning is, is your um, comparison of stents versus surgery, where you use the DAVIC meta-analysis. The largest, most recent one is the Lackey one from Stanford that was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. And this shows selective reporting. And that showed no difference in mortality, including in diabetics. And now if we look at the two big studies just reported, Syntax and Cardia, we see no difference in mortality be, you know, with, with stents versus surgery. We see no difference in myocardial infarction. What we saw was increased TVR from 5 to 8% more with stents versus uh, surgery. And we saw 2% less stroke. So you have all the benefits of the lesser invasive approach, and you're trading a few extra revascularization procedures for stroke, which I don't think anybody would think is much of a concern. As you say, um, perhaps this would be slightly better at the end of the next session because we'll produce more data. But let me tell you the danger of what was done with syntax. The, it has presented one-year results, and people have taken this as some kind of conclusive proof that there's no difference in mortality or myocardial infarction between the two strategies. This is fundamentally wrong. If you look at all the data, the survival benefit of surgery always accrues with time as stents fail. And we'll talk about the mechanism for that in the next session. So for people now to be saying there is no difference in survival between drug-eluting stents and cabbage for left main stem stenosis is absolutely untrue.
I said at the meeting in Europe that I thought the way the results were presented were dangerous and disingenuous. They should have been presented as an interim analysis of one year results. But for cardiologists now to be, be trying to say that this is conclusive proof that drug eluting stents are as safe as cabbage for multivessel disease is utterly wrong. Because by three years there will be a marked difference in survival. And if you look at the data, the one year data for syntax in terms of re intervention, although they halted it at one year, at that time there was still an exponential increase in the number of re interventions being done. So by two years that's going to be doubled. And by that time several patients will have died because they had not been revascularized properly. But that's not what the lackey meta analysis showed at three years or five years. Well, Even more recently, adding the SOS data to it. Uh, the, uh, let, me, uh, let me say something about the syntax as well, and I apologize uh, for saying this because I know you're going to get into syntax a lot more after I'm gone. But uh, when I, 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 I don't like the way that sounded. You're not sounded. going anywhere uh, too soon, are you? I, I, I'm, go I'm going to Japan. I'm, I apologize. But uh, the. Uh, the, uh, I completely agree that one year is too short. It's a, it's a, it's a snapshot, and it's a time to look, and we have to wait longer. But, but the other point is that uh, Syntex does uh, kind of, both of the studies give us a little, uh, little insight into the first year of where we are. And the interesting thing is that uh, all the other early studies, of course, what we looked at was the hard endpoints. We always assume that uh, re-intervention is going to be more with interventional procedures than it is with surgery. So the idea, the uh, very optimistic idea that you would be able to compete on that uh, endpoint was, was way out of uh, uh, the expectation. So uh, in, in Barry and East and all the other trials, we said that uh, the re-intervention was the cost of not having to do surgery up front. So you expected that, and you just measure how much that is. And for a patient, okay, if you've got a 10% chance of re-intervention, that's very good. If you've got 30%, that's not very good. And somewhere in there, it's, uh, it's worth it. The uh, outcome, though, I think, the, I think the, uh, and you've got to be cautious about sub-analysis, but what to fit with my uh, observations otherwise is that left main disease really does raise a question of, are there left main cases that uh, you could treat uh, very well with, with stenting, uh, isolated left main? On the other hand, for the diffuse triple vessel, this was a tough trial uh, to, to do because you, you put in many stents and uh, the outcome in the diffuse multivessel was, was a little worse. So I think looking at this data, uh, yes, five-year follow-up is going to be very interesting, but also I think we can begin to help in our day-to-day -day selection of what we're going to do with patients a little bit based on uh, uh, the differential between the left main, isolated left main group and the uh, diffuse triple vessel group. If I could just come back very quickly on that. I think you're absolutely correct. I think there are subsets of left main that can do well with stenting. Osteo lesions, mid shaft lesions. The trouble is that in Western society, up to 90% of left main are distal bifurcation lesions, and these are at notoriously high risk of restenosis. And in our population, up to 90% of patients have three-vessel disease, but they do better with surgery, independent of the left main.